All right, for this week's Captain Log, uh, today is Monday, April 9th, and today I was assigned with Dr. Sakai, and it was a little bit of a slow day for him. He only had two appointments on the schedule. Uh, so what we did is we started out by going out to Paravasis Stables and checking on a newborn baby that was born yesterday. And it was a little mini horse baby, so he was very cute. His name was Milo. And we just did a health check basically on mom and baby to make sure that everyone was looking good, looking healthy, no... Um, postpartum issues or anything like that and we did an IgG on our little baby and he was perfectly healthy he had 800 grams per deciliter shown on the snap test and he was happy and sassy as ever so that was exciting to see um, and then also so there has been a horse that Dr. Sakai has been seeing for lameness and um, Dr. Sakai kind of filled me in on the history of it and said that he had been um, the people have only had him for about a month and a half. Um, and about two weeks after having him, he came up lame. Wasn't really sure. Uh, treated him for abscess. Nothing worked. Um, so they kind of went further into diagnostics. And what they did is they did joint injections. And they used... Give me one second here. The hyaluronate sodium. <laughs> and um, amicacin. A, which is the steroid that they inject the joints with and um, it helped for a couple of days about two days he was feeling good and then today he was supposed to get shod but he came up lame again and it was worse than ever so after Dr. Sakai and I left uh, Paravasis Stables we went out to this woman's house and uh, checked on this horse to kind of see how he was looking he was very stiff walking out of the stall um, hoof testers didn't really bother him too much when we did that, uh, but he was very, very sensitive on palpation of the coffin joint. And so Dr. Sakai was concerned that the joint may or may not have been infected. So what he did is he gave him two grams of butte and uh, to make him comfortable and asked owner to bring him down to the hospital later on to do further diagnostics. And so um, about one o'clock this afternoon, they came back and took him into the x-ray room and got him all cleaned and sterile prepped and shaved up and did ultrasound didn't find anything on the ultrasound um except for the lining on the ultrasound where the coffin bone was from the synovial fluid and the bone the how it was showing up on the screen was a little abnormal but nothing too crazy so do, what dr sakai wanted to do was tap the joint and so he tapped the joint and him and dr booth which is the intern here um took the fluid into the lab and evaluated it to see if there was inflammation going on from possible reaction of the injection or if uh we did have an infected joint um few minutes went by came back and the good news is is that he his joint was not infected his neutrophils weren't um, they were about 22 percent he said which he said if the joint was septic then it's usually about 90 percent of neutrophils and so that was good news there so basically what we or what Dr. Sakai um, chalked it down to be is he had a reaction to the HA injection that was put into the joint injection a couple weeks back or a few days back and so we'll, we will just make note of that from now on that if he ever needs joint injections in the future that we can't use HA but we can still go forth with the steroid um, I guess HA reactions in joint injections are pretty common so um, he wasn't surprised that there was a reaction but he was happy that it was a reaction and uh, not an infection um, this morning I got to watch and slightly assist with a embryo flushing on a mare with Dr. Christy Stone. And I kind of came in midway, so they had a tube placed vaginally and had a cuff inflated. And what they did is they infused fluids into her uterus and up into her horns. Um, and there is a certain component in those fluids that causes the, um, the embryo not to be so sticky. And so in the hopes of making it not sticky it's the hopes of getting it sloshed around and floating around in there so when they flush everything back out of the uterus that the embryo comes out with it uh, we had a graduated cylinder and a little cup with a clamp on one end and a clamp uh, closer to the tube that was inserted vaginally 
and um, what they do is they flush everything into this cup and there's a little filter in there um, and whatever fluid you put in you want to get back out and uh, the fluid that is collected in that cup towards the end of everything um, is evaluated uh, microscopically by Dr. Stone to find an embryo. Unfortunately, uh, this mare did not have an embryo and the reason why they were checking is they did an embryo transfer. Um, and I guess they've had this issue with her before, but they do not believe that it, that the mare is infertile. They do believe it is, um, where they're getting the embryo from. Um, so they don't think it's her because they did a lavage and, uh, Dr. Stone was, uh, commenting on how the fluid she was getting back that that was the clearest and cleanest lavage that she's ever done uh so she was very happy with that so she does not think that anything was wrong with the mare uh it could be um from the other party and um then this afternoon we uh had two health certs which was quick and easy uh they do their health certs electronically here so dr sakai does it all no books or anything like that so we went out and we did tprs on the horses and he looked over everyone to make sure that they were good they already had current coggins and then uh he just had the owner give our receptionist the address and they were sent on their way and then this afternoon, uh, I just helped do a health check and TPR on a mama and a newborn baby that was born at 5 o'clock this morning. Um, mom and baby are both doing good. TPR's good. Uh, mom did have a little bit of tearing in her uh, vagina area. And so there's a lot of edema on the uh, right side of her of the vagina and the vulva in the back and I guess a hoof got caught there and kind of tore it a little bit so they're treating that with antibiotics um, we also did an umbilicus dip on the little foal just to keep it clean and uh, help it kind of heal up and dry up a little bit quicker other than that they are both doing well and happy and that is what happened today on April Monday April 9th today is Tuesday April 10th and today I realized that when there's a surgery, it takes almost all day. Uh, so today there was a two-year-old roan mare that came in with a sequestrum on her hind left leg and I found out that a sequestrum is a piece of dead bone uh, within a diseased or, or diseased, hmm, please hold. A piece of dead bone inside a diseased or injured bone. Got it. <laughs> and um, the mare had got roughed up by another horse. I guess another horse had gotten into her pen and kind of kicked the crap out of her. And so that's what caused that little sequestrum. Um, and we got her sedated and induced with uh, xylazine, and then we gave her gent and PPG as antibiotics. Uh, once we had her on the table, uh, anesthesia, vitals, everything went super great. Uh, the sequestrum was successfully removed, and it was a lot smaller on the bone than what had been protruding from the leg. It was just a lot of edema under the skin. And so, uh, Dr. Miller was the surgeon today, Shane Miller, and he removed the bone successfully, uh, smoothed it out with a bone rasp uh, to make it look good. Uh, there was really no damage to the bone or anything like that. It was basically cosmetic once he got in there, he said. Um, a stack wrap was placed on the leg and recovery was slow, but it went very well. They suspected that the recovery was slow for the fact that we did take rads on her prior to surgery and uh, we had to sedate her because she's just this young two-year-old green horse that hasn't really been worked with a whole lot. Uh, I guess the owner said that she's only had about five rides on her, so she's still learning. So she was very high strung today. Um, so we kind of had to give her a double hit of xylazine. Uh, so we're thinking that that's what kind of caused her to take a nice long nap uh, prior to waking up from anesthesia. Um, I did learn that PPG is preparacaine or procaine penicillin G and can only be given IV uh, no more than twice a day. Uh, genomycin is also given IV. Butte I can be given IV and orally four times a day. Lexi was asking me uh, quite a few questions and just kind of giving me a rundown on uh, whatever meds we were using and uh, what they are and why they're used and what they can't be used with. Uh, K-Pen is potassium penicillin and we've been giving that to a couple of horses uh, that have been, or not a couple, we have a horse here that um, had colic surgery a couple days ago so they're keeping her on that because she did have 
uh, pulmonary edema after surgery. Um, other than that, that's really all I did today. I did, after the surgery was done, Dr. Miller left hospital for the day. And so kind of just floated around the hospital, <coughs> helping with hourly treatments and everything like that, just checking fluids, um, doing TPRs, things like that, making sure that everyone was getting their meds that they were supposed to. Um, and Lexi was by my side for that, just so I didn't screw anything up. <laughs> um, and then uh, this evening, checking on that Roan Mayer post-op, she was doing very good. She was bright and back to her sassy self. Uh, I checked her catheter to make sure that everything was good to go, and it was. And she's a cute little thing. Um, so that was all for today. A lot of um, the other doctors and assistants and techs were out on ranch calls and stuff today. So um, after the surgery was uh, said and done, it was kind of a quiet day in the hospital for us. Um, we do have a full hospital, though, with a bunch of mares on full watch. So that's pretty exciting. So hopefully I have something in the near future on uh, some baby details. And that is all I have for today, Tuesday, April 10th. Today is Wednesday, April 11th. And today I was with uh, Dr. Sakai. And we did an umbilical recession on a little baby goat. He was about three weeks old. And uh, the owner's... Um, kind of picked him up somewhere from like a feedlot or whatever so there's really no telling how his life was before they picked him up with colostrum or anything like that or his health or cleanliness um, and so Dr. Sakai said that they have been treating this um, infected umbilicus for uh, a couple weeks now and they've tried antibiotics they've tried flushing it cleaning it all that stuff and it just hasn't really cleared up so today we took him to surgery and did an umbilical recession, which went very well and successful, and he recovered very well. Uh, for um, goats and ruminants like that, and especially little tiny goats, uh, we used banamine and BKX for uh, pre-med and induction, and BKX stands for butorphanol, ketamine, and xylazine, so it's a nice little thing for those uh, little ruminants. Um, for what I was told today that it just works better with them especially where goats kind of like to play games under anesthesia and so that was kind of our little concoction for today and with him being so small uh, we didn't have any uh, ET tubes that would fit in him so we masked him down um, and he was on the mask the entire surgery and he did very well he was breathing well and his vitals all stayed stable throughout the entire surgery um, I did find out that with goats it's kind of a catch-22. You want them deep enough so they don't feel what's going on, but you also want them light enough so if they don't get too deep and have breathing issues. So we were kind of definitely playing games with the SIVO this morning, trying to keep them right in that perfect plane. Um, and I did find out that SIVO works faster than ISO, so when they do start to wake up in that plane when they start to hop over that line um you kind of crank your not crank but you turn your sevo up just a little bit give them a few breaths to push it and it just brings them right back down to that plane where they need to be so that was really interesting to watch um and then after that there was a gelding that came in with a squamous cell i believe carcinoma um due to sun exposure he's a paint horse so he has light pigmented skin um the mass was down under by his sheath, and uh, once Dr. Sakai got his sheath and everything cleaned up and expected, it inspected the area, he noticed that there were a few more little lesions and ulcers and stuff that were starting to pop up. So the squam was starting to spread, and so he was letting the owners know that the giant mass that was the main obvious problem he would be able to remove today but all those other ones are liable to pop up it's not a cure-all or anything like that so he was definitely going to try to find a medication um I can't remember the name of it I forgot because he was busy and kind of ran after that appointment while we cleaned up and everything um that kind of helps with the progression of it and slows it down or prevents progression so they're going to try him on that and hopefully that that works um, and then this afternoon we went and did a lameness on a Palomino gelding. Um, I guess he's always had issues with his front legs. He only has shoes on the front feet, um, instead of the back feet because he's just kind of like a little trail horse to just go riding around. But he's always kind of come up lame, lame every now and again on those front legs. Um, but today he was very, very stiff, so we went out there and, uh, Dr. Sakai pulled his shoe and kind of inspected the hoof 
and um, there wasn't anything obvious. He wasn't too sensitive with the hoof testers or anything like that, um, but he ended up cleaning up the hoof and kind of saw some thrush down by his frog um, and kind of saw little divots and stuff um, in the sole of it. So he was kind of thinking that there may or may not be an abscess trying to work its way out. So what we did is we put a wrap on it and we made... Um, or Dr. Sakai made betadine in a sugar mix. Um, they call it sugar dine. And so he put that in the hoof to try to draw everything out and dry it out. And then put a wrap on his foot. And then we are going to recheck him on Friday. Um, and kind of see how he is doing from there. And that is all I have for my day today on Wednesday, April 11th. So today is Thursday the 11th, I believe it is, or the 12th, I don't know what day it is, I think it's the 11th, it's Thursday of April, <laughs> and today was actually a super fun day. Um, I was out on ranch calls with Dr. Lau most of the day and another um, VTI team, McKenna, and we went out to a rescue place out in Palomino Valley, and they rescue all kinds of creatures, so we did hoof trimmings on six goats. And we did CD&T vaccines on the six goats, and we dewormed all of them. And they're kind of cute because they all have their little quirks. Uh, one of them is kind of starting to walk down on her heels because her stuff's just starting to like give out because she's very old. And then another one came to them with, it almost looked like someone tried to amputate her hind like hoof. So she just has this little nubbin that she walks on. Um, and then we vaccinated and dewormed two of their donkeys, which was fun. They were just cute and sassy. One was a mama and one's a baby, or her baby. And then we had to trim hooves of eight pigs. So that was interesting because it was definitely nice little cardio and got a little ranchy for the fact that we had to flip the pigs. Two of them were good. We didn't have to flip them. Um, but the other ones, they were, they're called, um, Cooney Cooney pigs and they're Islander pigs and so they're super cute and they're fluffy or not fluffy but they have a lot of hair and so they were cute and it was really hard to flip them because you have to chase them around the pen and then try to get a hold of their legs and then flip them up on their back and once they're on their back it's almost like a turtle where they're kind of in a trance and um, so they kind of don't really fight you or go anywhere once they're on their backs and so that was really cool uh, and then we trimmed them with the hoof trimmers and then we dremeled them to round them out and once they're on their backs like I said they're super good about it uh, so that was really nice uh, to get an experience of and then that was all I did today and then I helped with evening treatments um, gave some IV injections for um, a new mama that colicked it the last couple of days and she's doing good so we're just giving her some banamine IV um, and then uh, just fed everybody we're slowly refeeding that mama and then another colic surgery from last weekend and so everyone's doing well we still have the three mamas that are on full watch getting ready to full and other than that everyone in hospital is doing good and it was a super fun day to end my week and I can't wait to see what next week has in store. And that's it for my week at Comstock.